This is the Broadtech and ProMod podcast, where innovation meets execution in AV and broadcast technology. In this episode, we zoom in on a critical topic, low latency. From live events to streaming, discover how to minimize delay and maximize performance with the right software and hardware design strategies. Joined again today by Yuri and Vadim, we're going to talk about low latency streaming for broadcast and in particular camera companies. So what are the main challenges that you guys come across mainly for, for those types of companies? Uh, yeah, the main challenge is uh, if we are going to design the product from scratch, we need to, how to say, to prepare architecture of the solution very accurately. Whether we need to integrate libraries, whether we need to integrate IP cores, or we need to develop from scratch IP cores based on ST2110, for example. So uh, it depends. So that is the crucial. Uh, and uh, here, we there we need to define how many devices are going to be produced. What is the expected price for the device? Uh, so it would help both of us for, that, for us, like the design company and for the customer to understand what is better and cost effective to use in their particular scenarios. So. Yeah, it's always like time and money question. Yeah. Whatever, like uh, you can enrich the the solution with whatever features you want. They will take time, and they will cost you a penny, right? Yeah. So basically, it's always some kind of mixture. What to do to make it like reasonable price and at the same time uh, feature rich enough to make the customer buying it. And you mentioned SC twenty one ten. There's a lot of confusion around SC twenty one ten, and and can we talk about that in comparison to, for example? NDI, where you you know you've it's like a library with the NDI and SC twenty one ten, it's it's different there because there's there's a lot of development work that needs to do. Can you kind of define the differences for for people around? Yeah, it's completely different. So uh, twenty one ten leads uh, development or uh, integration of the IP calls. So you need to collaborate collaborate with the chip vendor, you need to purchase the IP course from the chip vendor. Uh, you are uh, you need to have the partnership with them in order to get support. So because sometimes it is not clear how to deal with the IP core and uh, there are some questions to them uh, how to do it better. For the NDI, it's uh, let's say it's more or less easier because uh, it is described and they all, the whole libraries are provided in binaries and uh, there are examples how to deal with it. So, uh, and this stack relates on, on all parts. So it's related to the networking. You are putting the specific libraries on the camera to integrate libraries on sources and uh, on the receivers. And uh, it's not a big deal, but yeah, sometimes should be some effort should be paid to that. So, yeah, and uh, so 2110 definitely uh, takes more efforts to develop or even integrate. And there are there are libraries within uh, 2110, but you know, let's say you wanted to develop something new, that's where you'd need that development option. So explain a bit more about the 20, because I think there, there's a lot of misunderstanding about um, 2110. I want to be able to, use your expertise to focus in on what people need to know, especially if you're a camera manufacturer, in adopting that um, that kind of technology. So even if 2110 is uh, really hard to develop, but uh, it doesn't mean that it is necessary to develop it, like to say, in, in the whole. So there are different standards, there are a lot of standards, and these particular standards, they cover different scenarios. So you can take just for example, we need to uncompress video or compress it or just transmit it. So, and all of these are covered by the 2110 and by the customer needs, by their workflows, where implemented what particular they need. And then in comparison to NDI, where this, these are just, you know, essentially you just take that and then you just incorporate it in. And, and what, what's the, you know, from a development perspective, what's the difference? So the approach is completely different. So for NDI, 
we just need to integrate libraries. For ST, we need to prepare architecture to choose the specific FPGA or, yeah, let's say FPGA. So we need to figure out what is easier to purchase IP cores or to develop it from scratch. So the, the approach is completely different. So the part, NDI part is just to integrate. Here we can integrate some IP cores and develop from scratch some other so on the particular scenarios of the customer. And there's clear value for it being a proprietary codec, you know, because it's all there for you. And the value is you're paying that kind of subscription fee because it's that much easier to be able to develop. So if we're talking about the codec and we need to talk also about the latency. Uh, for example, in some projects, so we are also discussing, of course, Everybody tells so the latency should be less than 50 milliseconds. Sometimes it is not possible to achieve. Uh, but having the access to the sources, we can optimize something. Having no access to the sources, like we work with binary files, we just can tell so it works as it is. Uh, if it is 100 or 200 milliseconds, so we can't do anything with it. In this case, yeah. Uh, if we're talking about the ultra low latency so maybe it is better to have access to the sources and to understand the architecture and to do something with it and and let's say if you were a, a vendor that came to you and said look what i want to do is i want to make a, a tech stack based on ndi i want some transmitter or transceivers i want to make some cameras or maybe some ptz's uh, i want to be able to be um, to have a really good kind of cloud-based um you know service to be able to um you know installed and you know do all the things that i need to do on that how much of that can you get involved in both hardware and software if we are starting from scratch uh yeah we can support customer in the full life cycle of the device from the design architecture and uh, support and even legacy support when this device would be five years old or seven years old so yeah the full cycle the hardware design mechanical design industrial design as well so hardware software firmware development and support of all of this stuff and manufacturing uh, for mass production uh, certification support also so the full life life cycle of the de design of the device and of course because you've got so much experience that you know obviously for every client that comes that they're benefiting because of all of that experience that you have you know working with 2110 and ndi and also you've done work with dante uh what, what other what other protocols do you work with so normally we're dealing with yeah with ndi with nmos st2110 uh 264 265 uh it's codex codex yeah. Oh, okay yeah yeah uh, and uh, yeah i wish we we work with Dante, but uh, I hope that this year we will start any project uh, on the software development with Dante. So, yes, we just kind of the most popular stack that's that's on the market. So, yes. yeah, what, what Vadim just mentioned. So, if, yeah, and, if and, I approached you and said something, I brought to you, to your attention something new. I said, you know, I want to work with this, you know, a speed chipset that's doing JPEG two thousand. And you don't, you know, let's say you, you don't have that competency in the house. How do you approach it to be able to solve that problem? When we plan the, let's say, the capacity of the unit, uh, even for the year, we are putting the educational plans uh, into their workload. And uh, of course, several years ago, we've never dealt uh, with ST2110, ST but we started the investigation of the protocol develop develop we developed some kind of proof of concept for our needs so we're investigating if something can be uh, used like open source and for example uh the sony the companies they are providing the cpp model for in so the portion of this code can be uh, taken and it is pure uh, regarding the licenses and can be used in any commercial project so everything is like put into educational plans what we're going to do and we plan this work for the year uh, and of course yeah it's related to IPMX and for NDI and previously for ST 
and everything like that, yeah. Sure. Well, that, yeah, as like as Wendy mentioned, we have some learning curve internally, playing with different tools and technologies. But speaking about the customer and cooperation with the customer, so firstly, we surely transparently say that, hey, guys, uh, this is something kind of new for us. We've played that internally, but we haven't done with that commercially. So what we offer to them is uh, the initial stage called, called discovery phase, when we uh, like learn together or prepare proof of concept, some kind of or MVP or something like that, which allows us to play with the new technology, with a new tool, with a minimum of budget and make sure that either way, that's something capable we really can do. So in this case, we just go into the main development stage or we understand that this part hasn't worked out for us. So we say, okay, things happen. Let's, let's do something, something else.